Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. And I hope you enjoy this new show, whether you're viewing it on the internet or listening to a podcast version of the episode. I do want to thank you for being part of my audience. You can also find links to videos or podcasts on MiamiGhostChronicles.com as well as where you can submit your story about any eerie experiences you've had, which I would love to hear about. Just go to the Submit Your Story tab. Please subscribe to our channel so that you receive notification of when we release a new show. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is where I usually live stream and where I give you a behind the scenes look at locations where new episodes are being filmed at. I also tell you about all the interesting guests that will be appearing soon on Stories of the Supernatural. I hope you enjoy the show and I think you are all... Hi everybody, it's Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing? Well, today I have a super, super special guest. This is a lady by the name of Elizabeth Owens, but she also goes by Janie, is that? And um, she lives, She first of all, she loves to help people. She writes, she paints, and she lives in Casadega, Florida with a house full of animals and her husband. I can definitely identify with a house full of animals thing. Now, Casadega, where she lives at, is a historic spiritualist community where psychic mediums guide those who visit through spiritual readings. Now, some of Elizabeth's favorite things are her animals and facilitating the adoption of other animals with rescue agencies. And um, she has also been, she's a reverend. She's been a medium and an ordained spiritualist minister since 1985. And also she has written several books uh, regarding uh, you know, spiritually oriented themes. She's also a member of the National League of American Pen Women, president of the Daytona Beach Branch and State Recording Secretary. And she's also a charter member of the National Women's History Museum and vice president of the Garden Club of DeLand. And I'd like to welcome her today. How are you doing? I'm going to call her Janie because even though I said that, she also, you also go by Janie, right, Janie? Is that correct? That is my middle name, yes, okay. and that's I, what most people call Everybody me. knows you more. Okay, I totally understand that. So, Janie, I'd like to welcome you, and um, I'm going to ask you what I ask all my guests, which is obviously um, working uh, in from Casadega and being a, a spiritualist minister. It's understandable, you know, what your beliefs are, but how did that start for you? Did you have something happen and experience during childhood or was it later on as an adult? Well, a lot of people grow up and as little children, they have seen spirits or whatever. Yes. I had experiences, but it wasn't until I really started training in Casadega that it was like a memory thing coming back to me. Okay. Of, oh, yeah, I have felt that before. But as a child, and now I don't remember back then how what experiences. I just remember remembering when I went to classes. It wasn't until I actually had a reading when I moved down to Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. and I was so impressed with the reading of this medium, and I thought, wow, I want to do what she does. And that's kind of where it all went from there. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. And um, so, and, and I know sometimes what you describe happens where, of course, children being very open and unfiltered with having experiences and not knowing that what either they're witnessing or experiencing or feeling or seeing they're not supposed to be seeing, they accept it. It's It's fine. It's... And then, you know, as we grow up, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, either they forget about it or just is not as apparent. And then, but it's always there, oh, exactly. in other words. It's always there. It's just life gets in the way, for lack of a better word. Yeah, a lot of children who, you know, just denied what they saw, felt, heard, or whatever. And, you know, in later years, they had to try to go back and 
bring it back because they had that interest. So they took classes and, you know, were able to uh, gather that information again. Okay. And, I mean, and, and I think it's very interesting because, I mean, I've been to Casadega myself. I live down in Miami, so I've been to Casadega a couple of times and everything. But it's to me, it's fascinating that you went, you got the reading, and you felt such a calling that you actually pursued it. Because some people, sometimes people will say exactly like what you said. Oh, I'd like to do what that person's doing, but that's as far as it goes. They don't, they really don't go to the next step and beyond. Um, did anything happen to propel you along that, or was it that that you found a mentor? How did that come about? Well, I was so impressed with her that uh, she was a pretty well-known medium at that time in Orlando. And I said, I'd like to come to classes. So I started coming coming to her classes oh. and uh, eventually had training in uh, in Casadega. That okay. was where most of my training was. Okay. All right. So, okay, luckily then, and she was offering classes, in other words, that she was, that there was a place for you to go to to, to start learning. And oh, yes, yes. It sounds almost like what you're describing is that once you start taking the classes, you were able to develop or train an ability you already had to begin with. But before that, maybe it was a little bit unstructured. I don't. Well, you know, it's really kind of funny because um, I feel now in retrospect mm -hmm. that everything in my life was leading me to when I came to Casadega. Okay. And uh, I point that out in my upcoming book, which is going to be released in November. Okay. And it's it's really kind of amazing when I sat down to write this book, and I thought, my goodness, everything is leading me to this one place and time of Casadega. Wow. And it, it, it all pointed to that. Because I certainly did not have anything in, in my childhood, and my adulthood with ex-husbands um, kind of was prepping me for what was coming. It exposed me to things, and I'm a Pisces, so okay. I was very open to everything. Mm -hmm. And all these different events that happened in my life like uh, one one ex-husband talked to his grandfather, and his grandfather would visit him and told him he was going to marry me and and various things, you know. And oh, his wow. stepfather talked to his mother. And, I mean, it was so many things I was exposed to that by the time, I guess, I got to this woman who gave me a reading, I was like, wow, yeah, of course. You know, right. oh, I want to do what she does. Right. Yeah, but you only see that in hindsight, I guess, is when you look back and oh, yeah. you, you see that, you know, where there's like a chain where one event or uh, leads to another. And even though exactly. it sounds like, yeah, this was happening to another person, but it was happening to a person that was in your orbit, you know, obviously an, a husband, so... Right, right, yes. And let me ask you, when your husband was telling you about this, did you believe him? What was your experience, you being uh, an observer, what he was describing that was happening with him? Oh, I totally believed it. Okay. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind. I mean, I was a sponge, you know. I was totally soaking it in, and I believed everything. And it just kept on going. It just kept coming to me. And the more that came, the more I believed. And so by the time I got to that reading, I was like, yeah, yeah. come on, give okay. it to me. I want to do it. <laughs> right. Okay. So, yeah, that, that, um, that, in other words, this wasn't like something totally foreign or alien to you that you were like, I don't know, I have to process this. You had been processing it already for years. Yeah. On some level. Yes. Yeah. So here you go. You, you, you started taking the classes, you're developing and and, you, and and I'm going to ask you, because some people, they go that far, but then they never go further. And obviously, you went as far as being ordained. And I'm like everything else, at some point, the training wheels have to come off, and then you're doing it on your own. Um, yes. 
How was that for you as far as confirming the decision you made or were did along the line, did you ever have any doubts if this was the right thing for you while it was happening? Well, I have to tell you, when I went to two classes with this lady, mm-hmm. and in the second class that I attended, uh, we were in meditation, and what I saw very clearly was a woman with long brown hair, obviously in pain, and in a hospital bed. The next scene was the same woman lying in a white coffin, dressed in white, with white candles all around the coffin's edge in a very dark room. And then fleetingly, I saw the Grim Reaper. What a meditation to have. Yeah. Okay? All right. Three days later, (laughs) it was Good Friday. I was the passenger in a vehicle, and we had a bad accident, and I ended up being the woman that I had seen in my meditation in pain in the hospital bed. So I basically had foreseen my potential to pass from this world into the next. Oh, my God. Yes. So that was quite um So you were seeing this, but at the same time, you're kind of like not getting alarmed because to you, it's like, you first of all, yeah, obviously, didn't you didn't recognize it as yourself or that it was actually a premonition. It was more like, okay, I'm seeing something. Who does this belong to? Or is it even valid? Wow. Right. Yeah. It was only in the second class, so I didn't know what this was. It didn't make any sense, but I did have long brown hair, and, um, you know, if I, I, I can still see it in my mind. It never has left, and uh, somehow it just it resonated with me, yes. So uh, a lot of not-so-nice things happened after that because I was very injured physically, mentally, emotionally. I was pretty messed up for a while. Okay. And the guy who was I was dating and who was driving decided to dump me, oh I guess, God. guilt, you know. And um, so, yeah, you're like, yeah, whoopee. Uh, so I was very depressed. And Whoa. my roommate said, well, I'm going to classes in Casadega. Why don't you come with me? And I did because I needed some relief. I needed to heal myself and everything Mm -hmm. I was doing wasn't working. Silver mind control. I mean, I was trying all sorts of things, but nothing was really working. Right. So I went to Casadega and took classes and I jokingly say I never left, (laughs) (laughs) you know, because that's when I started training. That was 1980. So I started training and I became certified as a medium and ordained as a minister. Now, let me ask something, Janie. Do you think that that little exposure that you had right before you had the accident, that that was happenstance or that was something that needed for you for you to be involved in right before you had that accident? So it almost, uh, for lack of a better word, you having that vision confirmed for you how much That's- there was out there that you really didn't understand? And then, of course, you have the accident. But because of that initial contact you had, do you think that had anything to do with you later on going on and becoming becoming a reverend? Well, I think it all was interlinked. I, you know, it was all part of my path Mm -hmm. to bring me to where I am, because I ended up writing 12 books. You know, I'm published through Llewellyn and they're the biggest and best with the new age and yes. psychic things and so forth. So yeah, and I have a I slide here with some of the covers of some leading. of your books. I'm sorry. I, I, no, that I have that a slide with some of the covers of some of your books showing it so that the people will be yeah. able to see it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. it's um, that definitely yeah. it, it was, you know, and I think, yeah, I think that accident was just part of the stepping stones. And I think it was, a healing and uh, mm-hmm. that was to come later. And, you know, it was all meant to be. Everything happens for a reason. And it was just part of it to bring me to Casadega. I think my ex-husbands were meant to bring me to Casadega. And 
you know, it all evolved into Casadega. It's the weirdest right. thing. <laughs> all, all roads lead to Casadega. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not well, really, it, but yeah. <laughs> right. And it makes you wonder, you know, I mean, if you want to look at it, I, something good came out of that bad experience. You know, yep. hopefully Very you would true. think, well, right. why, I wish I could have gotten to Casadega without the accident. But still, who knows maybe what your, where you would have gone without that accident, at, you know, despite you having started taking those classes. But you really can't never tell about that. But bottom line, you know, it's, you know, even though I think we have free choice, I think there's also a, 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 a certain amount of maybe what predestination or things that we're meant, that we're meant to experience one way or another. Yes. Yes, I believe that. Yes. So, um, you, what happened? You started taking classes, and what at, at some point, what you moved to Casadega, and you started then giving readings yourself there from Casadega. Yes, uh, eventually I did move to Casadega, mm-hmm. lived there for numerous years till I got married and moved into Deland. Okay. And eventually moved back into Casadega and back to Deland, which is only like ten miles away. So. Right. But I, you know, I still have property in Casadega in my office and so forth. So uh, it's been kind of in and out of Casadega. <laughs> right. You know, it's a very old community, very old buildings. And sometimes you might want something a little more modern. But right. the housing there is really cute. Some of them anyway. Uh-huh. And some of the the house I had was uh, very adorable, and I still have the house, and my office is there, and uh, it has a special significance um, and ambiance to be in Casadega because it is so old, and it's like stepping back in time. And, well, the thing about the old houses, sometimes people don't realize, because the house I live in is 100 years old. That even when you modernize it, what the older structures, they always have sometimes some, like you said, some challenging things that happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you said. And when you have a newer house, you don't have to worry about those things. As in, like, exactly. like what I told you about, that your well dries up on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, okay, one of, the, one of the books that you wrote was The Path to Mediumship. And let me ask if you could explain it. Being psychic versus being a medium, is there a difference between one thing and the other? Well, everybody is psychic, Mm -hmm. you know, to a certain extent. Some people, obviously, more so than others. But it's simply like the phone rings, and you know it's your sister on the other end, and Mm -hmm. you haven't talked to her in weeks, but you just know it's her. Um, And and knowing your child is in danger at school or something and fell, and then the school calls. I mean, that's a psychic connection. It's like an information bank out there, and you're just suddenly getting a ray of light into you, connecting you to it, and you know something. Uh, Mm -hmm. So everybody has that ability. The idea of being a medium, though, is you are able to see, feel, hear, sense somehow the spirit world. Okay. And uh, not every psychic is able to do that. Okay. But every medium is able to be a psychic. Okay. I understand. Right. You can be a psychic and not be a medium, but if you're a medium, you are a psychic as well. Yes. Okay. And um, because I, I know that a lot of people, you know, there's the Hollywood version of psych, uh, psychic mediums, such as, you know, when they used to have the Ghost Whisperer and all these shows. Yeah. And I don't know. Is it really like that? Because I don't think it is. You know, because they make it, I think sometimes they make it um, too, I, I don't know, it just, it doesn't seem, is it that way? You tell me. Well, I think the movies, TV, so forth, they sensationalize things or people wouldn't watch the show. Right, it's exactly. It's got to be interesting and keep moving and so forth. Exactly. And, um, uh, you know, I I love those shows. I mean, oh, yeah. they're really fun to watch, but they yes. are a little 
out there. They're a little overdone. And uh, no, our lives are not quite that obvious, you know. You're not and, solving. And, you're not solving unsolved mysteries and cold cases like they did in some yeah. of these shows all the time. Yeah, okay. definitely not. All right. And I, I, I mean, you have to be a little careful with some of this stuff mm-hmm. because people get too enamored. I guess would be a good word to use. And uh, and we're normal people. Mediums are normal. Just like anybody else, you wouldn't know the difference Mm -hmm. passing them in the grocery aisle and so forth. So, uh, and no, they're not seeing spirits running around the grocery (laughs) store, you know, and going boo or whatever. (laughs) Right, that everywhere Uh, you you look, it's it's, it's, it's that person, okay. Yeah. And some people are open a lot and see more things than others. Mm-hmm. So, but the thing is, you're supposed to learn to turn it on and turn it off. Okay. So you're not bombarded because that would be very uncomfortable. Okay. I turn it on, I turn it off. And when it's off, it's off unless there's an emergency and mm-hmm. somebody in spirit's going to push me out of the way or something. You know, right. it's a little different. Okay. But generally speaking, we don't all run around with our antenna up and, you know, and trying to see what's going on 100% okay. of the day. You know, it's ridiculous. Right. We don't do that. Nobody does that. I don't think the um, Long Island medium does that either, frankly. Oh, I think, you know, it, I yeah, don't know. if she does, she's really got a problem. And I don't know. This is my personal opinion. And I know everybody thinks of it. I think she's likable, but at the same time, I sometimes think, and I, and I know what you mean about it as far as shows being, you know, making them, you know, a little bit sensationalized to keep their viewers interested. Mm-hmm. But I can't sure. see going up to somebody that doesn't know anything and start to give them a reading, especially about somebody that's departed. Because I don't think that everybody's ready for that. <laughs> especially. Well, yeah, there are two points on that. Number one, I don't think that really happens. I think they pre-screen them right, yeah. to make sure they want to hear from her mm-hmm. because the possibility is if that was the way it's being shown, she would go up to somebody and they'd slap her or throw a watermelon <laughs> yeah. at her. I mean, exactly. get away from me, you know. That's I mean, a... they don't want to hear that all the time, you know. Exactly. Some people are scared of it. Yes. So they have to pre-screen those people. I mean, right. And, and, and you know you what, know. depending on also the relationship with that person, supposedly that she's communicating with, some people are not ready to have that conversation, especially with a camera, a uh, camera person filming it is like, you of know. Of course. You know, it's, it's, uh, no, people, some people are very private people. They don't want that on TV. I no. mean, this is all pre-done before they ever go up and film somebody. It has to be. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you something, Janie. When you say being a medium, do you have, is it like what, you know, when you're meditating that you said you had that vision or is it that actually the spirit of that person uh, is, uses your body to communicate? How does that work? Um, it's a little of both okay. in a manner of speaking. Uh, if a spirit is going to come through to you, Um, Under normal circumstances, you are prepared Mm -hmm. and you're open for that communication. So in that respect, your body is being used. Okay. Not like I'm channeling exactly. Right. Because I know you see sometimes these, well, mediums or psychics that uh, sometimes they actually feel like the symptoms, let's say if that person had a certain illness. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Or if they well, died a certain way, they kind of like feel it. Uh, uh, yeah, well, that can happen psychically as well. Oh, okay. You know, that people could uh, feel something in their body that they're, um, that the spirit is experiencing. So, okay. you know, sometimes mediumship and psychic kind of blend, you know, a little bit. It's, you know, you ha- it's hard to differentiate between the two sometimes. Okay. And I know you have another book 
uh, nonfiction, which is Messages from the Spirit. And usually, I mean, I imagine when people, let's say, come to you for a reading, um, and let's say they want to communicate with a certain person that's passed on, um, yeah. is it always, I mean, do you all, are you always able to reach that person or how does that work when somebody says, I, I'm hoping to communicate with a specific person? That is a really good question. <laughs> so, <laughs> really, there are people, mediums, who will uh -huh. say to you, if you call and say, I want to communicate with my daddy, mm -hmm. you know, okay, come on, honey, come on over and we'll do that. Okay. Well, there is no guarantee that any medium can communicate with your relatives. It's just like um, uh, people on earth. Okay. You know, you get along with some people and you blend mm -hmm. and some people you mm -hmm. don't. Okay. So okay. any given medium may or may not be able to communicate with your father, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and either they can or they can't. And I find it very offensive when people promise, oh, yeah, no problem. You know, we'll bring them through. Okay. Oh, no, you can't guarantee that. That's impossible to legitimately do it. You right. know, so it's always yeah. wise if you're a medium to say, you know, we'll try. I can't guarantee it, but we'll see what comes through. And, I you see. know, the funny thing, too, is sometimes daddy doesn't want to come through to the I was daughter. about to say <laughs> to say that i'm thinking to myself yeah. what if dad's passed on and he's having a good old time wherever he's at and he's like you again what hello yeah <laughs> i'm exactly. doing my thing here i mean he might be busy you uh, know i mean just because you want to communicate right. doesn't mean he wants to maybe he doesn't like you so much as you like yes. him you know, I mean, you just never know. Yes. So you can't, It and, and another time, maybe the communication would be fine. But right. that particular time, not so much. Right. You just, so you cannot guarantee to somebody, uh -huh. oh, yeah, daddy will come through. Right. You know, that's not good. <laughs> well, and, and I don't know, I'm sure I, you tell me, have you ever had experiences with people who uh, want the guidance from, either one or certain family members or whoever, whatever about, mm -hmm. in other words, that instead of making the decisions because, Hey, at the end of the day, you're alive and they've died and you've got to make decisions. They're almost afraid. They still want to like communicate and get the okay or a blessing. Like in other words, they're dependent too much on this um, communication with somebody that's just passed on. And they're kind of like maybe uh, unwilling to accept that, they have to stand on their own two feet. Have you ever come run across anything like that? Actually, no. Really? Um, normally, it's just a question of how are they or anything they want to say to them at all will be great. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. But generally speaking, no, they're not really looking for their so much approval. I, ha I have not run across that. I was thinking more like, you know, some people when they're, you know, whether it's the husband or a parent or parents where, um, in other words, they're, they, I guess what I'm, um, that they still want to keep that type of relationship, but they can't because you're alive and that person has passed on. And as much as you would right. like for them to be alive and be a part of your life, you know, that, that possibility is not there anymore. So it's kind of unhealthy. Actually, exactly. That exactly. Yeah. Where yeah. they just they're, they're, they don't ever accept the part of, you know, how they say all the different stages of grief. And one of them yeah. that you come to is the acceptance part where, you know, depending on your beliefs, at least for the time being, this person yeah. is not part of your everyday reality. Yeah, I would. Ha if that happened, I would have to encourage them to move on. You know, yes. bless them and so forth. And but you need to move on and allow them to move on because sometimes people on the earth can be holding back 
their loved one by clinging to them too much, too. Let me ask you, and I, I would like for you to talk about that, because I understand, especially when somebody's grieving, like a recent death, where, you know, it's understandable that that person, also depending on the circumstances and who the person was, they want that person to be there with them. But um, what you just said, is there a point where they're holding that spirit from going to where they're supposed to be going? Yeah, most definitely, and gosh, they really need to not hold them back, period, from day one, but of course, they're going to be grieving for the Mm -hmm. person, and that's understandable, but after, well, let's say three months, I mean, that's not a definitive, but I mean, the spirit has to move on. And sometimes people don't understand that when they're clinging and crying and upset and everything, that they're really holding back the spirit from evolving. And uh, if they come for a reading at that point, usually they're too emotional for it to be really a good communication to begin with because the spirit's all messed up, you know, from all this emotional entanglement. And in a case like that, I do tell them you need to let them go because they need to move on and you're back. Because I imagine what that spirit wants to console them somehow or is like... Well, they may want to console them, but I think that's kind of the least of their concern. They're Mm -hmm. more inclined to be moving forward right you know yeah i love you honey but you know it's so great over here Mm -hmm. and i'm being compelled to move on and this is what i have to do and you keep pulling me back you know let go Um, exactly you know so it's it doesn't sound nice in a way but but no i can i i I totally understand though how um yeah it's yeah yeah one person's in pain and the other one's ready to go on to whatever is waiting for them and yeah exactly and you just can't keep hanging on because it harms them oh of course i can imagine if you know especially if um yeah, like I said, not the consoling as in like if somebody's saying, you know, always like wanting that person or calling out for that person, or, you know, the emotional ties, it's it's a difficult thing. Now, let me ask you, Janie, have you ever had it? I know people usually go to you for readings. Have you ever had it where you have a spirit that comes to you because they want to communicate with somebody left behind, but, you know, because that you have this ability to communicate that, it it works the other way around. You mean the spirit is coming, but they aren't coming. To right, exactly. Person. In other words, it's instead of the life person coming spirit. to you, uh, wanting to communicate, it's, you get a, a dead person or the spirit of a person that's passed on comes to you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I've had that happen. Okay. Um, because um, I did spirit guide drawings, you know, in pastels oh, for okay. people. So sometimes when I'm trying to get the spirit guide, a spirit in general will come through and want to make their presence known. Okay. And I, I can't go on because they keep coming in and I, I'm inundated with them. And I'll finally have to say, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I've got a spirit here, da 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 da, uh-huh. you know. And, and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's whoever. Okay. I'll go, right. okay, well, they're trying to come in, and they're not going to let this go, and I'm not going to be able to go forward with your guide till we get rid of this spirit. <laughs> let me ask, you know that, I'm sure you you've know, seen that so, movie Ghost yeah. that came out, and you know that there's a scene with Whoopi Goldberg where she's yes. finally owning her things, and she's got a room, and all the spirits are there trying to elbow each other out of the way because they want to be the yes. ones to, like, communicate. Yes, you know, exactly. like Exactly. Because, hey, she can actually see and hear them or hear them. And they're like, it's my turn. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) 
Right. Yeah. That's that's why I was thinking. You know, some of them they have some messages like everybody wants to go be at the front of the line. <laughs> yeah, and then I've had other times where I'm doing a group session mm-hmm. with say three sisters, and um, they're hoping that some relative will come through and. Sometimes they do, okay. sometimes they don't, you know. Right. But then, you know, and then all of a sudden I've got somebody or other coming in and they're and they're like, why is he coming in? <laughs> I don't know. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it's like, you know, it's like a light goes off up in there and, and all of a sudden they've got a channel to come in and they're taking advantage. Here right. they are. Oh, exactly. okay. Well, I haven't thought of him in years. You know? But you know what? But, you know. It's almost, though, at the same time, it almost like lends validity in a way because the person that comes through is not the person that they want or even thinking of. Right. But still, oh, they come no. through. And I imagine what? They give you some type of information so that they understand who it is, either a name or something about themselves. Yeah. That. Well, let me tell you something really weird. I had three ladies in front of me, and I uh, was seeing, you know, who was around, and I'm describing this young man on a motorcycle and on and on, you know, and they're looking at me, and they're not identifying at all with this spirit. So I'm like, well, take it with you. It may occur to you because uh-huh. you can't think of everybody you've ever known Right. In your whole life, who's on the other side, right? Right. And then it suddenly dawned on this woman, oh, wait a minute. It was like three, four days before that, she had seen an accident where this young man had died on a motorcycle. Wow. And apparently, he decided to come along with her. Oh, you're kidding. So, right? I know. And what? I mean, she sure wasn't expecting him, but there he was. So you never that know. is so interesting <laughs> because you always, everybody wants to make a connection with family or friends, somebody that they know. Yeah. Well, you never know. I always tell everybody, everybody from your first grade teacher and anyone you've ever met could come through. <laughs> right. It doesn't you have know, to be recent to or, or uh, well-known or expected, in other words. Yeah, it's up to them and it's up to me. It's not up to the client. It's whatever spirit wants to come through. And believe me, some really off-the-wall people will come through sometimes. <laughs> Let me ask something, Jane, before we get on to, because I want to ask you about your fiction books, but before we get there, is there, what is the difference is between, let's say, some, is as far as, let's say, what we think of as ghosts, you know, is it is it spirits that are trapped and just don't understand they're dead versus somebody that's died and they under they're aware in other words they go where they're supposed to go what what's what is a it that you found people, out well a spirit is able to cross between you okay. know from whatever they're doing in life mm-hmm. on the other side your grandfather doing whatever right and being able to come in at times uh, just because they come in doesn't mean that they're earthbound or something. Okay. Um, and some people believe that the ghosts in particular are earthbound. Mm-hmm. And I've read some things where it's also like an energy that is left behind. Right. And I don't know. You know, I, that's really a hard one for me to give you an honest answer because mm-hmm. I would have said normally that a ghost would be somebody earthbound. Right. But I also think that's really kind of sad yeah. to think that that poor woman, say, up there on the balcony has been there since 1840, <laughs> mourning the loss of her lover who went on a ship and drowned. You know? Right, that she's forever uh, waiting for his ship to come home. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what they always say uh, is the situation. So I think there's a little more to that than just that because that just doesn't sound like a um, 
logical explanation. Right. And granted, I can understand their energy being left behind, Mm -hmm. and it's like um, there's just that thing that's there. And people just keep building up on that idea, and thoughts are things. So it's like you've created this ghost, so to speak. Right, and uh, and and what they call kind of like a residual, it's maybe the imprint or the feeling or... I imagine it's like any place where you have heavy emotion. Yeah, I mean, that energy is left behind. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, you know, it residual energy is about what it is, exactly. And let me ask you, you considering that you're such an animal lover, do you get visits from spirit animals? I have at times. Usually, though, it's my animals oh, you know, okay. that will come to me. Wow. Um, I've had it happen a few times in readings, but not that much, really. I don't know why, because I love animals, mm-hmm. but for some reason it seems like it's more my animals that come to me. Okay. And that's that's got to be very comforting. I The reason why I say that is I'm a very big animal lover. <laughs> and I tell my oh, audience, good. if you ever hear like a weird noise, it's probably one of my animals. One of the birds, my mm-hmm. dogs, whatever, because you can't control animals. Oh, I can animals. hear your bird, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's a weird weird noise i'm sorry that's just that's that is what it is but um yeah mm-hmm. i i think that yeah and i understand what you're saying as far as um the i think that the ties that we have with our animals you know that they've done the studies how animals let's say a dog will know when their owner is going to come home and it's and they've done it where it's not because they either smell or hear a car or whatever mode of transportation They've done studies where they found the animal is aware, let's say, when the person's, you know, coming home. And they've even done it where the person will come home at different hours. So, you know, to take out the, uh, well, the animal knows that this is around the time, even though there you're talking about the animal knows how to tell time, that you would come home. And they find that animals are aware of that. In other words, they have that psychic ability if you want to call it that or that presentiment of knowing when their owner is coming home or oh, expected sure. home they'll act a certain way animals are just amazing and especially with cats I mean, too they say oh, cats do that all the time yeah i've got five cats <laughs> then what they were three talk, dogs i was they were talk, and i thought this was fascinating they said that Cats are known for knowing when they're going to go to the veterinarian and disappearing. (laughs) And they can't be found. And they say that they've tried everything, like not even talking, that some vets have even gotten to the point that if the cat's coming in, if it's a cat appointment, it's like, don't worry about the appointment, just show up. (laughs) First come, first serve. Because (laughs) so many people... um. They, as a matter of fact, I think the test was they took in a certain area, they, they found uh, 65 veterinarians. And they all called them and asked them the same question about their experiences with cat appointments or cat owners. Uh-huh. And all of them, all of them said the same thing, that people would make appointments and then they couldn't come in because their cats had disappeared. Like, make, like they kind of like nowhere to be found. Yep, I've got one of those. You got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she hadn't been to the vet in quite a while. <laughs> well, yeah, and we it's like, and, and then you think to yourself, how would they know about something like that? <laughs> I know, it's amazing. But, um, yeah, that's one of the things that, that uh, you know, that's what you were talking about being psychic. I think us humans aren't the only ones that have that ability up to some extent. Oh, exactly. Yeah, one of my chihuahuas. Oh my goodness! Every month we get out the the liquid medicine for the fleas and ticks, you know. Oh. It's a, and the smell of it, you know, she doesn't want it on her. Uh huh. And all my husband has to do is go near the drawer. It's like ooh. pull it open, and she's gone. Like, she oh, knows automatically. Yeah, I have a little little chihuahua. She's my 
oldest girl, and I've taken her everywhere with me. She's so small. So I've got, I mean, Aww. I have pictures in front of the White House. I have pictures in Times Square with her little head hanging out of my a shoulder bag I have for her. And, Aww. um, yeah, and I have another Chihuahua mix. So, yeah, I know how some of them, uh, and it's really funny because most of them, it's like I have an entourage. They follow me all over the place. But they all associate that I give them a bath in my bathroom. And that's like no man's land, you know. Oh. That's the one where they'll look at me from the door just in case that happens to be the one day that, <laughs> that I drag them in there. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Yeah, they got they all got their personality. and They yeah, do. I, My goodness, yes. yes. So, anyway, but getting on, you've also, besides nonfiction books about uh, being a medium, mediumship, et cetera, you also have a series of fictionalized books based out of Casadega, yes. is that right? Yes, yes. They're murder mysteries. Oh, all I love set those. in Casadega. <laughs> I love those. Yeah, I see, I'm looking at one walking behind the moon. And what is it? This yes. is the, the setting that you have for the, for the main character of the books? Yes, uh, yes. Chloe is the main character. Okay. And um, she is reincarnated from the Salem witch trials. Oh, and wow. she's actually a reincarnation of Rebecca Nurse, <gasps> and who actually did live and is a very distant relative of my husband. Wow. So I, I, for years I wanted to write something. So I connected her to the Salem Witch Trials, and okay. she inherits a bookstore in Casadega, and all those people are associated with the Salem Witch Trials as well. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's the murder and so forth and so on. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I did a whole series of four books, and that was fun. <laughs> well, let me ask you, does your heroine have psychic abilities? Oh, yes. Of course. Okay. <laughs> of course, she had to. <laughs> okay. As I thought, I was going, come on, you can't put her in Casa Day and not give her some psychic abilities. Oh, yeah. Well, everything in the in all the books, there's a lot of psychic elements going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are mediums. And, well, one medium is Nightingale, who's the best friend of the heroine. And she has some interesting things that happen. And, yeah. It's all, um, um, well, it's not based on truth, but right. the psychic, the psychic kind of stuff is true. It okay. can happen or has. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, uh, you know what? I think, and it's really funny because, you know, some people say, um, you know, like, for example, that police sometimes use psychics. And some of them are out there, but a lot of them use them. But they 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 keep it on the down low because, kind of like they don't want to be exposed. You know that hey, we we needed a psychic to come and help us solve this crime. But then I'm thinking of the flip side, that if psychics really it was proven, could see it. I'm thinking, God, I wonder if there would be. The murderers who thinking I gotta do away with this psychic because she's gonna see who I am. I mean, it's like it's almost like yeah, keep on believing that psychics can't uh, can't really help the police because um, I imagine that if it ever became concrete, that they were probably like you know that thing about leaving no witness behind. Well, what about oh, yeah. the kind that sees you even if they weren't there? Wow. Yeah. Well. I have not really messed much into police work because I don't need to do that. Well, no, I don't you need know to what? Get myself in danger, you know. You know what? The other day I was talking to a guest who, um, she wrote a book, but she had to do with you know the, um, you know these groups that work with the, uh, you know when they find skeletal remains or unidentified victims, and sometimes it's years and years and years have gone by, and they try to like, you know. In other words, the police yeah. have long ago like said, hey, this is a cold, cold, cold case. So they have the time yeah. and they work on trying to piece together who the identity of this person is. And um, right, right. I think sometimes in situations like that, 
I, I can't see why a medium would be great to be used on stuff like that, especially when they don't even have a name sometimes to go on. You know, they're like know. totally know. baffled as to, you know, that's really where the problem comes in. You know, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't even sometimes have to be a murder. Sometimes it's just uh, remains that are found and whether the person, you know, how they pass away, but they just, they're never, be, they're never identified. And, um, and some of them, I imagine, and some of them, they go back a lot of years that you think if somebody, if, if whoever did this is probably dead themselves. But yeah, sometimes everybody thinks of psychics just working in like real time. But I'm thinking, and, oh, and one of the things was that I was surprised. And she says, oh, about 40,000 people a year like turn up that they don't know the, under those circumstances that the remains, whether they're fresh or old, they don't know who they are, you know. And I know that sometimes they, they become cold cases and... I was thinking, man, this this they should have a, 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 a psychic squad just for stuff like this. Yeah. A psychic squad. That's a good name. Yeah, I like that. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, like you know, this is but at this point and I'm thinking to myself, you know, and and of course in a, in a perfect world, you know, you're it's not only are you gonna identify the person, but you know, you're gonna find out, let's say in an instance of where it was a murder the identity, but I think otherwise, I'll forget even finding out who murdered them, if that was the case. I think that just being able to give a name to that person and maybe letting their family know, I think that sure. right there is the majority of of what's important, even though everybody oh, likes justice. Yeah. But um, yeah. I think that for, um, you know, just not having, basically being nameless and uh, letting the family know what happened to them. But uh, yeah, the psychic squad. I think that you know, you know how they have all these shows about these cold cases that uh, they have certain uh, teams that they put together from police for cold cases. I think they yeah. need to do that for psychics. <laughs> do a book like that. Do a book like that, Janie. That. You need to tell a producer that. That would be a good idea. A good show. No, why don't Why don't you write a book about that? Base it out of Casa <laughs> Dega. You know, oh, believe God. me, there's enough. We have enough stuff going on here in the Sunshine State, God, because every once in a while, some of the things that happen here, you never see them anywhere else, especially when it comes to murder <laughs> yeah, mysteries and things like fiction. that. It's like, what? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, I, ha, were you raised here in Florida or did you move over here after as, as an adult? Or, I mean, I know it sounds like yeah, you've been in um, Florida for many, many, many years. I came to Florida in 79. Oh, my God, yeah. You're just like a native. So I, I'm practically a native. Yes. But, no, yes. I was born in Washington, D.C. Okay. And uh, lived in Ohio. And then from Ohio, I came to Orlando. Okay. And now I'm in the land. Right. But you've been here long enough to know what I'm talking about as far as some of the yeah. usual things. That you, it's only in Florida. It's like, oh, my God, Florida. But makes yeah. the headlines, but the wrong way. It's like, oh, <laughs> Oh, I know. It's like, oh, no. And it's like an embarrassment. Sometimes. Yeah, I know. It's like, okay. Oh. Florida cookie state. I know. I know. <laughs> it, it's like, yeah, I've had enough of that. Oh. Like I said, um, after a while, it's like, yeah, we make the headlines, but for the wrong reasons sometimes. Isn't um, that the truth? <laughs> so this, this book that you have coming out in November, what is that book about? Okay, uh, it is Spirit Messages, mm -hmm. Inspiring Stories About Mediumship and Experiences from the Other Side. That is the title. Wow. Long title. I, I, that wasn't the title I gave them, but that's the one they came up with. Okay. But um, basically, the book is about my life. It, and oh. they actually asked me to write it because they didn't have a book mm -hmm. written by a medium about their life. They had okay. psychics, but not a medium. Okay. So the, it's a collection of my personal experiences wow. with the unseen side of life. And, and like I said early on about how my life led me to Casadega, okay. it tells how, the whole story of how I ended up in Casadega and becoming a writer and all okay. that. And I also talk about the different experiences I've had through my life and with the spirit world okay you know it involved into a, really a personal journey of growth for me as i wrote the book too and uh 
so I, I even decided, well, gee, you know, I did a little ghost hunting and put that in there. And okay. I grew in my knowledge and was exposed to new understandings of maybe what I previously had feared and didn't appreciate, you mm-hmm. know, but learned. And, you know, so it was a lot of fun writing the book and especially getting some more research. I went to St. Augustine to research and got pushed by a ghost. That was fun. Where at? And at I the had fort? The or where, where did that happen at? Where did you get pushed at at St. Augustine? Oh, gosh. That was... Um, when I was staying at the St. Francis Inn. Oh, you stayed at the St. Francis. Oh, are you familiar with it? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, Yeah, it's very haunted. Because I know they've got the the servant girl, and I mean, they've got a couple of the ones that they suppose. Yes, 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 staying in Lily's room, and that's the room, and that's the one I stayed in. Okay. But when I would, and the lights went out uh, around the bed, the sconces, you know, and oh, oh turn God. it back on, it went out again. I finally left it out. I mean, it was like, forget it, you know, they're going to keep turning it out. Uh-huh. But I was walking back. I had a girlfriend with me, and we were walking down the sidewalk, and I came around um, this um, uh, telephone pole. And all of a sudden, I felt myself falling over, leaning to the left. I hadn't stumbled, tripped. I didn't do anything. Right, right. But I realized I was leaning. And so I tried to, you know, catch myself. And I ended up raising my arm up. And I kind of, you know, stripped away a bunch of skin on the Kakina wall and uh, twisted in the air and fell down on my back and rolled, and it was interesting. (laughs) Anyway, I was all messed up, this big bloody mess in my knee and my arm and, Uh you know. But after I got home, I'm looking through this tourist book. Don't you know I find a story about this little girl with her parents walking down the street, same street, within about a block or two of where I was, and suddenly the spirit came and pushed her, and she kept telling her parents, I was pushed, I was pushed, and the father had seen the spirit. It was a man running, oh. and and she had did not scuff her toes, her sandals, nothing, and she banged up her knees. And I'm like, holy cow. So yeah. then I start asking a few mediums, and they said, oh, you were pushed. Yeah, you were definitely pushed. You know, and I'm like, holy cow. Yeah. You know, I couldn't believe it. Well, but I got pushed by a spirit in St. Augustine. And you, and you know what? <laughs> it was amazing. A lot of people, and, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, everybody, and like you said, the St. Francis, certain places you know, are known to be haunted, and they even have, you know, identified who the spirits are. I mean, I've gone to St. Augustine a bunch of times, but I remember one time, you know, the Tolomato Cemetery, which is that old, old cemetery, which they've, it's gated, it's got that iron gate. And I remember one yeah. time I was yeah. there, this was about maybe seven, eight years ago, and I remember we were walking, because, you know, that's, that's, the, that's one of the best things I like about St. Augustine, is just great to walk around but it was already nightfall. And um, I remember going by there and taking a few pictures, you know, looking, it was already closed. You know, they had it closed and everything. And Janie, I'm not kidding you. The next day I got so sick, but this is the thing. And a lot of people say, Oh, I mean, one thing is sick for, first of all, I felt great. I felt fine. The next day I got sick, but like, Oh, not like only when you have a cold, but you know, when your whole body is like sick, I was like that for like two or three months. That's the longest I had been sick. Because, you know, sometimes you'll go Good. through a, when you get sick, you'll go to maybe three, four days and then you get better. Oh, yeah. And then I started to think about it. I was like, what happened? I mean, I cut short my outing. I, I came back home because I felt so bad. And I'm thinking, you know, I said, you know what, Marlene, here you are. You're just looking in through the, you know, cemetery and you're taking these pictures and you're not thinking about it. But a lot of those people that were interred there, because that's the old, old cemetery, a lot of these people passed away from a lot of diseases like, you know, yellow fever and things like that, that, you know, people don't pass away from any anymore. And 
maybe somebody liked just put it on you like that here you are just standing outside the gate but I'm telling you I've never forgotten it and my imagination is good but at the same time I have a pretty high standard as far as you know attributing something to you know a spiritual source or a supernatural source mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah you don't exaggerate no it. absolutely not but I felt I, I went from feeling perfect great to the next day I was like oh my god I felt so horrible and it wasn't like oh it was a stuff like you know food poisoning it was like you know when your body is like I just want to like your hair hurts I just felt so bad and um I still I part part of me wants to believe that that was some type of effect from being that night at uh, in front of the Tolomato Cemetery and um just because and how long it was that I felt like that I want to say it was almost like two months for me to totally pull out of it energy wise and you know like that you feel like okay I can you know my my energy was like so I I, I, a lot of things well it's a really old city you know in St. Augustine and I mean for all the shops and stuff a lot of things happen and even though they have those tours I, I tell people you know what for all the things that are publicized about certain places there's a lot of things and deeds that nobody ever talked about or knows about that the, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen and like you said that mm-hmm. imprint sometimes especially if it was something very um emotional it's right it's there it's there imprinted it's just that you know we see what we want to see in other words but um so anyway you, you you this is part of what you included in this book that that's going to be coming out in november right Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I sure did. Yeah, and that night, too, I was laying um, on my uh, back because I couldn't lay on my side because my arm was hurt. And my legs, my feet were vibrating in the middle of the night. I don't mean tingling. They were vibrating. The bed was perfectly still, and my friend was sound asleep. (laughs) It was just me and the vibration. So I figured I must have been getting on my feet, you know, from that nice sweet maid who passed away there. I was going to say, you so, had never had that. No. In other words, that that's not like a normal thing. Not, not on me like a normal thing, but this was this is not like, no. hey, my feet don't always vibrate. Like, no, what's going on? No, my feet don't vibrate. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's my, that, no, that's, that was different. Let me ask you, have you have you ever had a spirit, Janie, come to you and give you a warning or guide you or something along those lines? In other words, not that you, you know, un, un, uncalled for that. All of a sudden they come through and they tell you this or... Don't get on the airplane or something. Yeah. Either don't get no, on the airplane I've, or why don't you do that? Yeah. Anything like that. I have known people who have had that happen. I have not had that happen yet. Okay. I hope it does someday <laughs> to, you know, avoid, if that needs to be. But, uh, no, I have not had that yet. Wow. That is, even though, I'll tell you what, that the description that you gave of that vision that you had, even though you didn't realize that you were looking at you, I yeah. want to say in a way, it's a premonition, but it's almost like you want to think, was that a warning? Even though, how could you have known what it meant per se, as far as that you were going to be in a terrible accident shortly thereafter. I was too much, yeah, I was too much of a novice. Right. I would not have, and I even said what I had seen to the group, and nobody said anything. They just were like, well, you know, right? Yeah, meditation, it's like... whoop whoop. You know, what does she know? You know, but it was me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, let me tell you something. That story that's incredible. That is really incredible. Yeah, that is like, boy, and that was almost like urgent. I mean, let me tell you something. It's pretty graphic as far as content. It's like, check this out. I mean, there was nothing from what you're telling me. There was nothing ambiguous about it. You know, it was something like no. a hospital bed, and that's like what, and, and a and coffin. And yeah. let me ask. One of the things I've heard sometimes that people, when they're trying to develop their psychic abilities, that they have kind of that Cassandra effect where sometimes all the stuff they start getting at the beginning is kind of like pretty bad stuff. Almost like, I don't want to keep seeing all these bad things happening. Is is that accurate? 
as far as when yeah, people... that happens a lot to people, um, especially if they're not um, training or anything. They start getting things, and they're, it scares them. Mm-hmm. And basically, that is trying to get people's attention that they have an ability and they need to develop it. Basically, um, and obviously, if it you know if it's something bad, you're going to pay attention. And right. remember, if it was something real nice, you'd probably forget about it. You know. Right. So yeah, that can happen. Yeah, yeah, I can. I mean, I've heard of. Of some people that, like you said, that they really ha- have not been formally trained in being psychic. They just have that ability. But then some of the stuff mm. they start seeing or the premonitions are kind of like either accidents or just things that are very disagreeable. So they like want to shut it down. Like, I don't want this anymore. Right. If sure. what I'm going to see is all these bad things happening. So Yeah. Why am I seeing bad things? You exactly. know, I've had people ask me questions like that. And, you know, you try to help them through it so they don't see those things Well, anymore. imagine it's just like everything. It's just that it's, I mean, think of, if you think about it, fear is a very high emotional state that as far as if you were going to pick up something, I mean, if you, if I imagine if you have that ability, um, it's 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 difficult and and some of the things i think that sometimes people are afraid of it's not only witnessing it is that maybe they want number one they doubt if they're accurate or number two they feel like well if now i know this what am i going to do with this information can i do anything with it does it make a difference or do i just get the information and that's the end of it well look at it this way i went to saint augustine Mm -hmm. I wanted some phenomena to write about to put in the book. Okay. Well, if I'd gotten a little push and just (laughs) kind of tripped over to the side a little bit, well, I wouldn't have thought anything of that. But when I got a push, fell into the wall, fell down, banged up my knee and my arm, (laughs) uh, I paid a lot of attention to that. Absolutely. And then come to find out I'd been pushed. It would right. never have made it in the book otherwise. <laughs> right, and you, I understand what I'm you not, mean. Yeah, because I'm not easily impressed. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I still didn't believe that the first time I read it in the book, but I thought, oh, that can't be, but oh, how come I'm finding this? This is kind of bizarre. And right. then other things fell into place, and so it made sense. But, you know, so, yeah. Sometimes it's got to hurt a little to... Right, and, then I, and I see what you're saying. If it would have been any less, you would have written it off to, oh, I sidestepped, uh, you know, I lost my balance. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't have said, okay, I yeah. got pushed, but that was pretty hard to overlook, which made you, which led you in the direction of, I need to find out if this has happened to other people. Yeah, And exactly. uh, Which kind of put that stamp of, yep, you were pushed. <laughs> yes. What street was that? Just all up by the St. Francis? Um, uh, was it St. George? Let me think a second. I think... Yeah, St. George Street. St. George Street. I know which town. one that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was... I mean, uh, St. Francis is on the corner of St. George mm-hmm. and something else. I forget what that right, one is. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking what I see in my mind. Yeah. Yes. Well, Janie, I would like to thank you so very, very much for spending this time with me tonight. It has been wonderful. I love talking to you. And I look thank forward you. to when your book comes out in November. Uh, because yeah, I can't wait. You know, and uh, it's an autobiography. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, basically it is. <laughs> but you know what? It sounds, it's like the autobiography of a down to earth, a real psychic, you know, medium, you know, not the, the, the sensationalized version that sometimes you get on TV. No, I'm very down to earth. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> you got to convince I am a skeptic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Which by the know, way, I think a I lot of people overlook that it. and they don't realize that sometimes being psychic doesn't mean that you just take everything at face value. Yeah. No, I'm very critical and skeptical. You got to prove it to me. Don't tell me you can do something. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, likely going to go, uh huh, right. 
you know, when I hear some story. Like, mm, exactly. Sure. <laughs> I uh, absolutely, I, I totally agree with you 100%. So again, Janie, thank you so very much, darling. You have been wonderful. And like well, I thank said, you. Uh, you have been wonderful. And I look forward to your book and uh, catching up. I, I want to read those, those, uh, you know, being a Floridian, I, I, I want to catch, I want to catch those books, the ones that, uh, the fiction ones that you wrote with uh, placed out of Casadega, because it's just easier when you've been to the place like, hey, I know what she's talking about, as far as the setting is concerned. Yeah, yeah. well, some of the buildings are really there and mm-hmm. some are not. I know, so, but still, it's know. it's just the setting in and of itself. <laughs> you know. Yes. Okay, sweetheart, take care. Okay, thank you so much. You've been a doll. You too, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Oh, guy. Ah, she's a wonderful lady. I'm really looking forward to that book when she comes out with it. An autobiography. Because all her books have been um, published by Llewellyn, which anybody that's familiar, especially that um, reads books, you know, they, they're they a very well-known publisher of books having to do with paranormal, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, supernatural, uh, new age, all that. They're a very well-recognized publisher. And she's... Um, and they asked her to do that. I think that's great. And you know what? I'm I'm always, um, I always like to see books that are truthful. Like I said, because you see all these shows on TV, you know, well, Ghost Whisper, Medium, and all these, you know, they, the movies that they put out that sometimes they make it look like you're walking around and you're continuously uh, having uh, running into dead people or like and it's like like she said you know uh, obviously with the training but otherwise you could live your life uh, and I mean there's a lot of circumstances and I think that if that was the case you would you wouldn't be able to function because plus you would be physically drained uh, if you were walking around trying to live your life and every half a block you get a dead person that jumps out at you wants to give you a message or wants you to whatever or you witness something and it's like okay uh, you'd be uh, you'd end up in an insane asylum because living a normal life versus that doesn't you know just doesn't um i think it's exaggerated that yeah like that under certain circumstances like when she described that thing about Wow, that was pretty uh, amazing, you know, that, that she has a premonition kind of of seeing a woman uh, in a bed. And then that other thing, that was like, I mean, and here within a few hours, basically, she's involved in a serious, serious accident. I mean, you think, was this a premonition, a warning, don't do it? Or were they trying to tell her, look, this is going to happen, but you're going to be okay? Uh, that's the thing, you know, that sometimes, and I guess that's what she talks about. When you're untrained, it's difficult sometimes, maybe if if you've got that ability to understand what it is that they're trying to say. Unless, of course, maybe like when you're doing a reading for somebody, that somebody comes to you and specifically says, I want to speak to daddy, like she said, or or my wife, that whatever, or, or grandpa, where do you leave the will? Huh? Um, that, you know, there's, there's uh, I, the boundaries, I imagine, have to be very firmly established because if not, it would bleed over into your normal everyday life and I don't think you could function. If you don't do that, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I have heard of people who have had psychic abilities that because they're not trained or understand too well what's going on, they shut it down because if they feel like, in other words, if they don't totally like shut it down, then it just rides roughshod over their life because they start seeing things or visions or warnings or feelings if they're one of these people that are sensitive and feel at the most inappropriate times, like there's no off button for them. So they just whoosh, shut it totally down. Like, I don't want to see nothing, 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 nothing. Because they just can't handle the the abilities they have, which I imagine that's that's where the, the training part is so important. Uh, because I guess 
contrary to what people think of, I don't think that that's, you know, how some people say, oh, that's a curse or I don't think it's, a, I think it's a gift. It's a gift, but like everything, if you don't understand it or know how to use it, it's, you know, you don't see the value in it. But yeah, and I agree with her. I think we all, all are all psychic some people more than other some people because they accept it and develop it others sometimes have those flashes of insight under stress or fear or you know when you've heard of people they see apparition crisis of somebody that just departed and the thing with the animals the same thing but i think we're all psychic up to a certain point especially when it's a connection with somebody that we have a relationship and you know, and I think, and I've heard of this of people having either visions or presentiments, like even with a person that might be on the other side of the world. In other words, linear distance does doesn't matter. Um, it's the relationship that you have with that person that dictates that bond that you have with them. Uh, and I was talking that thing about the pet. Yeah, that, I was researching that and I was like I was fascinated I mean I always knew it because like I said because I've had animals but when you see that they're testing for it that they've tried to do certain types of tests to prove that and it does bear out um that was incredible yeah I think that there's that we have all connections amongst ourselves and let's say our families or those that are close to us it could be a neighbor whoever uh and including our pets and i mean and if you want to and i know my horticulturists out there will go yeah marlene including even the plants and fauna that we have around us in our home i think that we're all connected on some level one way or the other and <clears throat> it's almost like you know the spider web where you touch it on one end but the whole thing vibrates that there's that entanglement, that there's that connection, even though sometimes we just don't understand what it is or how it works kind of deal. But aren't we all fascinating creatures? I think we are. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, if you're catching us on YouTube or on any of the podcast platforms, make sure to subscribe so you get notifications of when I release a new show. Uh, if you're one of my true believers, I'm still always looking for new stories. Go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to the Submit Your Story tab. Okay, I want to hear from you guys. Catch me on Facebook, Twitter, where I live stream. And again, I'm going to say that I've got a lot of super interesting guests. I'm already filming for Season 5 of Stories of the Supernatural, which is already going to 2019. Yay! Yes, we're already going into season five of Stories of the Supernatural. And um, I got a lot of great ideas, a lot of great guests and things coming up. Okay, but I always leave room for the unexpected. And by that, I mean either an investigation that comes my way, um, that I'll participate in, a field investigation. <clears throat> I've had a lot of requests to do more shows about you know since i'm a trained hypnotherapist my degrees in mental health well not really mental health human behavior i'm a behaviorist um i've got a lot of but i always my my emphasis in hypnosis was always in alternative areas of hypnosis even though i did traditional stuff like stop smoking and weight control i i went into a stu um, past life regression uh a lot of way out there stuff so I've had a lot of requests to do some shows just about that uh, so again guys thank you so much for being part of my audience you're all wonderful and I will be seeing you very very soon take care <laughs>